Hey everyone, Misha here, and I am getting ready to unbox the Oak, Ash, and Thorn Tarot, which I'm super excited to do. It it did come out a little while ago, like true, true story. And I may have forgotten the box somewhere in my house, but I just found it and I just cut the, um, the label just now to open up the box. So I thought maybe we could unbox it together and see what kind of magic is inside. So let's see what's in it. So this deck was a Kickstarter that I backed and it came all the way from um, Home Firth, United Kingdom. So it made it quite a trip across the, pond, across the pond. So I'll bring everything up to show you, but there is a really sweet little note and it talks about, um, hi there, I've possibly traveled thousands of miles for a mere mile or two. But now that I'm here, I must say that it's so lovely to finally meet you. So this is really sweet. It's a little note from the deck, so super cute. So that's kind of lovely. And then there is a tiny little, like a micro print of one of the cards. So this is the King of Cups. And then it also looks like there's a little note. It's got like the cutest little washi tape box and um, hedgehogs. I'm gonna see if I can open this without no, I can't. I cannot open it without destroying the washi tape. That is okay. So let's see. Oh, oh, how cute. I've never, I've never had a deck that does this before. So this is a certificate of authenticity for the Oak, Ash, and Thorn created by Stephanie Burrows and illustrated by Adam Olders. And this deck is number 273 of 3,500. <laughs> and it's stamped um, May 4th of 2020. Now, this i didn't get this then i think it was it came out quite a long time after um again due to like some of the decks had a lot of delays because of covid but um that's pretty cool that i don't even remember when it came because i totally lost it but that's pretty neat so here's the certificate of authenticity and here's like a little mini print and let's take a look at what else is in the box so i believe this is the deck pretty cool and underneath the deck let's see we've got there's a little strip of cloth. This is me going, hmm, okay. There's a strip of cloth and it looks like, oh, okay. So I think this is a little spread cloth, which is super cute. Like I like that. And you know what? I'm smelling it. it. It, I think this may have been hand dyed. Oh, it says the way, it's made by the way of tea. So beautiful and I would suspect that probably everybody who got this got one that's a little bit different. So that's gorgeous. I have no idea what this is for, but maybe one day I'll figure it out. And then there's also a little packet in some cute little grat bag here. We've got, oh, so some more artwork from the artist. It looks like we've got some little um, prints and cards and some little mini prints too. So I'll bring these up to show you as well. Super cute. So we've got the prints and then the little tiny prints. So these are nice, um, really gorgeous, gorgeous work by the artist. So let's take a look at the deck. I really appreciate it. Just as an aside, when people wrap their decks in something like this, as well as whatever type of wrapping. So this deck came in um, some of the, the uh, paper, um, shredded paper but also in this, which is nice because, you know, this deck did come from England, so, or the UK rather, so, um, you know, it wasn't necessarily going to have the best trip over. Super cute rabbit, um, that's awesome. Rabbit wrapping paper, tissue paper, and oh, there's the deck. Oh my gosh, it's heavy. So beautiful. So it's Three Trees Tarot Volume One, Oak, Ash, and Thorn. And I'll bring it up to show you there's these beautiful, it's almost like embossed wrapper on it. Super pretty. And you can see it goes all the way around the deck. And yeah, let's take a look at the deck then. So I just wanted to start off by reading the back of the deck, which is gorgeous and it's embossed. And it says the Oak, Ash, and Thorn, beautiful tarot cards with roots in the enchanting natural world. It's an eco-friendly deck and it's inspired by the Rider Waite Smith with the 78 cards um, and actually two double-sided reference sheets, which is really, really nice. So um, yeah, I really like that they are talk on here that it's um, carbon neutral, solar power, vegetable, 
based inks. That's not something that I've been seeing in a lot of decks yet. So it's really neat that the creators took the opportunity to uh, really focus in on that. So the box itself, I haven't opened this yet. So I'm trying really hard not to destroy it. I probably will. Don't freak out if I rip the box, guys, because I tend to be hard on things. But okay. And that's... Um, Side note, you know, if you're if you're doing a eco-friendly deck with not the glossy box and all the fancy business business, it might mean that you have to sacrifice some things. So this is um this is not my favorite kind of box just because I do have a tendency, they're usually really well done, and I do have a tendency to ding them up or rip them open when I am trying to open them. So just something um to keep in mind if you do get this deck and it's not in some other type of box, don't get don't get too fond of that box because it might get uh, torn up quite a bit. All right, so here we go. Here's the deck. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that wrapper. And here we have, okay, so here are our two little um, guide cards. I like this. This is really cool. This is neat because, um, so we've got one for the majors. So there you go, the fool through the wheel of fortune. And on the other side, justice through the world. And what I particularly like is, um, it has, you know, every every color is, is a different card. So it gives you the, just like a quick little keyword meaning for each one. And then we have the minors too. So one side is wands and pentacles and the other side, yep, I should have flipped that. I should have known that was coming. The other is swords and cups. And I love that it has, you know, thoughts, emotions, got a really nice little um, summary of each. Keep in mind, of course, that this, because this is so small, there's no way they could do reversals and everything like that but that's okay. This is a great little reference for anybody who um, is especially starting off learning the deck and just like having this with you. And honestly, this is, you know, make more of these artists because this is great to have. So, oh my gosh, I'm in love with this deck already. So check out the back. It's so pretty and it, it echoes the design on the box, but we've got, um, hence the name, right? Oak, Ash, and Thorn. So you can see the acorns with the oak trees You've got the thorn running through and ash tree um, trees as well. And then the animals, if you could look really close, we have a rabbit, a fox, a squirrel, which may be a chipmunk because we're UK, and a, a crow or a, a raven. So um, really gorgeous. Also love the fact that, you know, unless you're really paying attention to the direction of the animals, this is one of those background backs that can be, you know, turned either way and you won't know. Okay, so nice little thank you card. Um, right off the bat, the cards are not super glossy. To me, this is more of a matte, which means that when I you know, shift them around, you don't see any gloss happening. There are not metallic edges or anything, which is totally fine by me. I do not care. I don't care about those things. They're fancy and they're awesome, but what's important to me is the, the deck and whether or not I can uh, understand the meaning of the card just by looking at it. And you know what? This is some gorgeous artwork. So I think I'm gonna be really happy with this deck. So we have the Fool. I will not go through every card. Um, I'll kind of go to the ones that, oh my God, though, look at that, oh, look at that magician. Sorry, I will, however, get distracted by the cards that I think are really cool. I don't usually go through every card when I do a review because there's 78 cards in the deck and that would take a while, but I usually go to some of my favorites. So in the major, <laughs> In the major, one of my favorites is the High Priestess, and I'm laughing because that's a falcon of some sort. It's probably either a Kestrel um, or a Merlin or a Peregrine Falcon. I'm going to guess, though, if I if I had to guess, I would think it's probably a Kestrel. And here's what's cool. There's no book with this deck. So while you have the little, the little um, card, right? So right here, it tells me that the High Priestess is um, sacred knowledge, mystery, and the subconsciousness. I, I don't have, you know, I don't have a book that's telling me, well, this is this bird and the bird means this and these little purple flowers mean this and this is why it has these these elements. I don't know. And so in the, on the back of, uh, of the little letter rather that was in the box, it tells you this is meant to be read intuitively. And so if you are going to get at all flummoxed or upset because there isn't a book that tells you everything about everything on the card and all the symbolism, this may not be the deck for you because... I mean, it, it's just not there. And I'll have to go back and check and see if maybe there was a PDF or something later on, or maybe there was another tier where you could buy a book. That's something that has been happening a lot lately. But in the in the standard deck, the way that I purchased it, there is no, um, no manual, which is just fine by me because 
I know the general meanings of the cards. I think it's important that they mentioned that it was based on RWS, which gives you a good place to start. And I know a lot about the natural world. So for me, there, this is just like layered with meanings. I love it. Ah, oh, the Empress, check it out. Mama Rabbit with all of her babies. There you go, gorgeous. Let's look at um, another one of the cards that I often sort of judge a deck by. <laughs> I have to laugh. There's the Wolf King. Justice, gorgeous, beautiful. Uh, as I was saying before I got distracted, one of the cards that I often will look at when I am looking at a deck are the Tower and also Death. So here's the Death card. And isn't this interesting? This is probably one of the few death cards I've seen in a while that doesn't have bones on it. It doesn't have anything super bleak. We have a rabbit here that is looking up at a bunch of moths, but it almost feels like perhaps that, um, that the rabbit is sitting in a place of darkness, right? Alone, maybe, maybe in a place where it's looking up to the heavens. I sort of feel like perhaps this rabbit is kind of coming to the end. And if you look, we have these flowers that are transforming into moths and there's even, um, or butterflies, there's even what looks like a cocoon here. So it is that idea of death leading into rebirth, which I think is quite lovely. So we have two foxes with the devil, the devil being all about temptation, right? And trying to um, get out of the things that bind us so that we can move on into another pathway. So this is one of the ones that I always look at in a deck is the tower. I feel like if the t if the deck doesn't adequately uh, in, in embody or be able to adequately communicate the tower, then it might not be a deck that I really want to work with just because I feel like this is one of the most straightforward cards. So here cards. So here's your tower and it's a it's a beautiful tree on the edge of a cliff being struck by lightning and another strike is coming and it is also already on fire so a lot of um a lot of destruction in this particular tower and we have the birds i can almost hear them um flying off to escape so for me personally that's a really great um great example of that one look at this world card oh the stag bringing the the fawn the world like oh so clearly I'm already in love with this deck and it's going to be, I wish I could show you guys. I don't know if you can see the detail, but the level of detail in these, in these cards is just absolutely crazy. Really, really beautiful. So I'm already finding that, you know, I'm going to love this deck. Let's look at a couple of other, whoop, other cards. Sorry about that guys. That are um, pretty standard ones that like a lot of people, for me, I usually look at the Ten of Swords. Check. Yep. They, they got that one pretty well. But I, you know, this deck is already feeling like a really hopeful deck to me because I find the Ten of Swords to be one of the, one of the most challenging cards in the minors anyway. And it's often a doom and gloom card. But if you look at this one, the artist did this incredible job of including all of these butterflies. So that idea of um, it being the end, but beautiful things can come from it. This is a, this is a great card for that. And also since we're talking about swords and we're thinking about communications, thoughts and ideas, the stabbing into the bird here, and having the butterflies come out of it really shows the transformation that's possible when you think about your words and your your um, your ideas and your communication and the things that you believe being transformed into um, something really beautiful after you've had hardship. So yeah, that one's really good. Let's see. Um, so we've got the king, some of the kings. So in the pentacles, we have kings, queens, um, pages, knights. Sorry, that was the knight, not the king. There's your king. Gorgeous the queen oh that one is just like so so fertile so so just mama abundance energy the knight and the page i wonder let's see if all of the okay so the entire suit of pentacles is all based on rabbits our suit <laughs> so back of the card right we have the the rabbit the squirrel the fox and the crow or raven so that's going to match your card so for cups we have the squirrel and i'm going to guess that yep sword of the air right is the raven and our wands is the fox yep beautiful oh look at that six of wands though so really and oh nice okay and it looks like we have oh let's see it looks like we have a couple of bonus cards so we have possibilities, which is all of our suit animals together with a dragon. And let's see what else we got. And then we have a really cute little mouse card with nothing. It's just a little extra card and then a 
a Fox card. Sometimes, if you've never backed a Kickstarter before, sometimes the Kickstarters will throw in extra cards as like a backing bonus. So it's really neat that those are in there. So this is the Oak, Ash, and Thorn tarot deck. It is spectacularly gorgeous. Oh, look at the Queen of Swords. Oh my gosh, I love it. If you are the kind of person that loves nature and loves animals, this is a good deck for you. If you want a deck that's more connected to humans, this is not it because there are no humans in this deck, which makes me really happy. Like I enjoy that because I like to be in decks that are just nature based. But um, the other thing about this deck is it doesn't, it's, it's got a lot of light in it. Like this is a great example of that in this Ace of Wands, but the colors are more muted. So wow, look at that though, you guys, the colors are a little more muted. Um, they're, the, the palettes are all kind of within the same. So like this is a cup card, but it doesn't really have a lot of, um, like that, this one has water in it, but it's not as obvious as you might find in some of some other decks. So I would say that, you know, this is a great deck for anybody who wants to learn to read intuitively. Anybody who wants to be able to look at the imagery and get ideas beyond what the cards traditionally mean. Um, you can really dive in deep with these and, and really have a think about what they mean. Just super, oh, there you go. There's a hierophant with an owl. Um, just really spectacularly yummy opportunities to dive in deep. Um, and all, overall, like this is definitely going to be a deck that I start putting into my daily use because I love nature. So if uh, nature and just beautiful artwork and um, a deck that is intuitive speaks to you, this one is a great deck for you.